Good morning, friends, and welcome to the inauguration or the dedication of the Asha Grants 18 and 19. May I request everyone to be seated at the back, please? We'll start in a minute. May I invite, invite the dignitaries on stage? So Dr. Vikram, if you could lead the dignitaries on the stage. We have Dr. John Sherian Newman, who is the vice chair of the Velo CMC Council. Uh, Ms. Sangeeta Patel, the director, Health Office of USAID. Dr. Margaret Kumar, who is the chair of the Velo CMC Foundation. Our principal, Dr. Solomon Satish Kumar. And Reverend Finney, a chaplain. We'll now have the invocation by the choir. The choir is composed of students from nursing and allied health. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, let it be on earth as it is.
Thank you, choir, for that lovely song. May I call upon Reverend Finney Alexander, our chaplain, to lead us in prayer. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. Gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of another day. We gather together in your holy and precious name. We remember your greatness, your goodness, and all that you have provided in our lives, in our institution. This morning, O oh Lord, we give you thanks for the ASHA US aid. We thank you for the CMC Valor Foundation. We give you thanks for the ASHA grants 2018 and 2019. Lord, we thank you for blessing your children to provide infrastructure, equipment, and exposure to good values and best practices, to sustain development, to provide your good health, and nurture lives and families. Thank you, Lord, for all that they have provided to improve maternal and neonatal health to set up advanced simulation centers of excellence. Lord, we give you thanks because you are the giver of all good gifts. And you have chosen each of us to be good stewards as channels of your blessing to all people, those who are around us, those in need, those who suffer, those who go through different kinds of ailments. Lord, we pray that these gifts and grants may be blessed by you. All people who receive it may receive your goodness and your grace and strength. May they find hope in you. May they have happy families, take care of all their needs. We give you thanks for our director, for our principal, for all our administrators, O oh Lord. We thank you for the partnership that we have together to build your kingdom as we just heard. May you be present through this meeting. Help us to rejoice in your presence. Help us to dedicate in your presence to do more good in the days to come. We offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Finney. May I call upon Dr. Vikram, our director, to welcome the dignitaries and all of us who have assembled here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and a very warm welcome to all of you who have gathered here, dignitaries off the stage and on the stage. This is, uh, uh, this is a momentous uh, occasion for us in the institution where we see a lot of grants and projects coming to fruition with a lot of help from lots of people. Uh, I particularly want to welcome uh, Mrs. Sangeeta Patel, who is the Health Office Director at USAID India. 
She's accompanied and uh, by Dr. Ruben uh, uh, Swami Swamikan and uh, Ms. Claret John. Uh, we also want to uh, especially invite another very special group who were the intermediaries and help us with many of these grants with Asha. And that's the CMC Velo Foundation that's represented by Dr. Margaret Kumar, who is the chair, who is seated in the audience. She's seated on the chair, I'm so sorry. Uh, Dr. John and uh, also Dr. David Rains and Mr. John Reel and Ms. Patricia Carroll. We're also happy to have with us Dr. John Sherry Newman, who is the vice chair of the CMC Council, Dr. Solomon Satish Kumar, who is the vice principal, and all the other dignitaries uh, off the stage uh, as well. ASHA grants is something that uh, we as an institution has been involved for a very long time. It goes back to almost the early 1980s. So almost 30 grants have, have happened over, over this long period of time. So that's the long history of uh, interaction with the uh, ASHA organization and the USAID in, in funding these, uh, these programs. These programs are very critical as in the past when I held the portfolio of gifts and grants which Dr. Vinu Moses holds now, I was very closely involved with the sewage treatment plant on the Kagari Petri campus and the nursing college. And those still are a testament and I'm sure all of you all will be visiting it and seeing you know, the, 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 the benefits that they bring to our institution. Uh, today, we are gathered to, to basically uh, dedicate the grants that were awarded for improving maternal and neonatal health outcomes in OG, obstetrics and gynecology and neonatology, and developing advanced simulation centers of excellence for anesthesia and college of nursing. Uh, the details of them are in the brochure that's attached that most of you all have. The USAID ASHA grants are a catalyst for bringing a change in healthcare delivery services. In the past, USAID has supported the setting up of advanced diagnostic simulation labs, integrated health support systems and health facilities, improving perinatal outcomes, and survival of newborns with cerebral injuries. ASHPA's mandate is a goal to foster mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of foreign countries through the sharing of best practices and values that build positive relationships and support progress in the fields of health and education worldwide. I think the United States and India, uh, we share a lot. We are the largest democracies in the world. We also have a, a lot of common shared values, and uh, that is uh, something that uh, is very important in taking these programs forward between our institutions. While our projects still will deliver better health outcomes for most vulnerable in our communities, the ASHA Award goes beyond the physical equipment we procure. The ASHA partnerships allow us to improve our organization's best practices in harnessing medical technology and innovation and communicate our shared values of gender equality women's empowerment and promoting an inclusive, equitable society beyond the walls of the institution, which are all shared values between our two great countries. What I want to mention here is that uh, for the visitors especially is that when you look at the revenue generation of CMC, 97, 98% of our income comes from patients. So what these grants really do for us is they bring very critical value, edu uh, value additions in the three, three main elements, which is education, service, and research. But most importantly, they bring these value additions without transferring the cost down to the patients. And a large proportion of the patients that we treat are the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. And this is something we're very grateful to Asha for enabling us to provide and bring as, as, as an outreach in our efforts. This project uh, will deliver, the nursing and anesthesia project will deliver active experimental learning to improve clinical skills, communication, decision-making, and critical thinking to foster self-confidence and teamwork. This will result in excellence in nursing, adoption of best practice in protocols and patient safety, and demonstration to the community of our shared American values of women's empowerment, inclusivity, and critical thinking. For the obstetrics, gynecology, and the neonatal programs, our project provides equitable birthing facilities for all women and the use of innovative medical technology to save babies born with birth asphyxia. So, so uh, again, uh, this is a time to welcome everybody and also a time to say thank you to so many people who have made this possible. It goes without saying, the ASHA organization, USAID, 
Thank you so much for all that you do here and around the world. To the CMC uh, Velo Foundation for facilitating and making these things happen. Uh, many of these projects have happened during the time of Dr. J.V. Peter, so I want to acknowledge him for putting in place so many processes that make these grants applications smoothened on our side. And there's a whole lot of other people, there's a formal word of thanks, but I will have to say that thanks to Dr. Vinu Moses and his team for all the work that they have done in taking this uh, through, not easy. Dr. Joy for overseeing this and uh, many people from the development office who quietly work in the background. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Victim. Uh, we'll now have an overview of the four of the two grants, the ASHA grants 18 and the 19. Uh, we will have Dr. Vatsala Sadan, Dean of the College of Nursing, and Dr. Ekta Rai, who is a professor and head of anesthesia, give us an overview of the ASHA 2019 grant. And following that, we will have Dr. Gigi Matthews, who is a professor and head of OG, and Dr. Benjamin Ross who's the Associate Professor in Neonatology, give us an overview of the ASHA 18 grant. These are the direct beneficiaries of the grant, and they will be giving us a short overview of their projects. So, Vatsala ma'am, could you please start? Thank you. Respected dignitaries on the stage of this stage, members of CMC community, and friends and well-wishers who are attending this dedication program virtually. It had been a long felt need to have an advanced simulation training center in College of Nursing CMC Valor to effectively augment the learning process of nursing students and novice nurses. Our dream came true today through ASHA Grant 2019 a project made possible by the generous contribution and support of ASHA USAID, Velour CMC Foundation USA, Dr. Kem Fatmi, and Christian Medical College Velour. It is a joyous and a proud moment for each one of us as faculty and students of College of Nursing. It is yet another feather to our cap and a milestone in the development of College of Nursing, which provides nursing education in the country for 113 years, and recognized for its quality education in the country and across the globe. I thank and praise God for his blessings, wisdom, and guidance. The Advanced Simulation Center for Excellence in Nursing, we call it as ASIN, is a state-of-the-art facility located at College of Nursing. Simulated clinical learning experience for all levels of nursing students and no novice nurses will be provided with the objective of offering a stress-free, safe, and self-directed learning environment. The vision of this simulation training center is to develop strong nursing workforce with the required scientific and clinical competence that would ensure quality and safety of services provided in all healthcare settings in the country, thus impacting patient outcomes. And our mission is to create and provide a non-threatening safe and effective simulated learning environment for students and novice staff that prepares them to pe perform comprehensive quality nursing care for patients in hospital and community settings. We had set three goals for this simulation uh, training center to incorporate simulation learning into curriculum for all levels of students utilizing immersive learning strategies. And the second goal is to train students and staff to provide competent and safe patient care, appreciating the role of effective team care, teamwork. And the third goal is to promote learning that enhances communication, critical thinking, and clinical decision-making skills. And this Advanced Simulation Center for Excellence in Nursing includes five uh, different labs, which are situated in College of Nursing. The undergraduate nursing curricular framework it is specified, more focused on development of critical thinking skills, 
competencies appropriate to human and professional values. Blended learning comprising, comprising of experiential learning, reflective learning, and scenario-based learning, and simulation, simulated learning is also inbuilt in the revised curriculum of undergraduate program in nursing by the Indian Nursing Council. And it is the appropriate time that we are able to get this simulation training center. So these five different labs are the requirements of the Indian Nursing Council. And we have the advanced nursing simulation lab for the medical surgical nursing for the advanced core competencies in adult health. And nursing foundation lab is for the first level students for the basic nursing skills. And obstetrics and gynecological nursing is for the midwifery students. And pediatric nurse nursing lab is to teach the pediatric nursing competencies for the um, for all levels of students and also the community health nursing lab. And how did we get this? Uh, we have three different phases in the ASHA grant, 20, uh, ASHA grant. The first one is we are supposed to be doing the public diplomacy activities. And the second one is activity uh, monitoring stage, activity implementation phase. And the third one is activity monitoring and evaluation phase. So as part of phase one, uh, we initiated a baseline survey and also we promoted uh, informing about mission and objectives of ASHA USAID and also the sh shared American values such as women empowerment, gender equity, as well as patient safety. And as part of that, we had many programs both in the community as well as among uh, the CMC community, students, faculty, and also the uh, rural uh, community, rural and urban community. You see some pictures there. And uh, we also brought about the change in the attitude of men and women in vulnerable communities towards gender equity and women empowerment by communicating shared values. As part of that, we all women empowerment. We also had uh, the income generating program start uh, taught to the village women in the rural, rural and urban community. They learned how to do fabric painting as well as tie and dye. And uh, we have trained women empowered women from four different villages on these uh, additional skills. And as part of uh, the next uh, phase, we are supposed to be adopting and disseminating the best practices in education and patient safety through simulation learning. And uh, um, to, in order to do this, we oriented our faculty to the simulation uh, based learning. Uh, we had a Fulbright scholar from Loma Linda University uh, Professor uh, Lisa Roberts, who was here with us to train our, uh, to teach and orient and brainstorm our faculty on simulation-based learning. Then later, we also uh, had the installation of the mannequins, equipments, and uh, infrastructure modification. All that was done. And the training was given by Laudel Company um, uh, as part of the ASHA project, that is Education Support Services. And they were able to provide training for 35 of our faculty, senior faculty in all five different specialties. There are three levels of training. All 35 of them have undergone level one and level two. And we are waiting for level three training and for certification. And this is the training of trainers. They will ultimately go train their own faculty in their own departments. And apart from that, we have sent four of our faculty to Indian Nursing Council, SGT University, Delhi. Uh, for the training offered by Japaiko and Indian Nursing Council. One of our senior faculty went as part of senior training fellowship to uh, Johns Hopkins University, and she has come back and she'll be taking over as the simulation lab director. And uh, this is a standard operating policy and procedure manual, which we have developed, which, uh, which is vetted by many of our alumnus from other countries, as well as by Professor Lisa Roberts. And uh, these are some of the pictures of uh, the activity monitoring. Uh, Dr. Anuradha Jain was here in the month of September to monitor the activities along with a lot of group of people and Dr. Vinu, you can see. And uh, we had many times our uh, friends from Bellor Foundation visiting us. And you find uh, uh, Mr. John Reel, Dr. David and Patricia there. And uh, uh, Apart from that, in between, we had many of them uh, from USA, Dr. Vincia Pandian from the Board of Directors, Velour Foundation also visited recently to monitor the activities of this um, uh, lab. This simulation uh, training center 
will deliver american style active experiential learning to improve clinical skills communication skills decision making skills team work and proficiency in procedures in an active le- learner centered environment and respect for the patient as a person at this time i would like to uh, acknowledge and appreciate those who are with us as we were walking through this um a uh, whole process of establishing and implementing this project i will take just one minute i would like to thank dr jv peter our former director who was a source of inspiration from the beginning and provided the support and so needed from the institution and i also thank dr vikram matthew the current director for the support and guidance given in different ways i would also like to thank all the departments of cmc for the support provisions uh, services provided such as infrastructure modification and installation of equipment and making it functional today a special word of appreciation to mrs gayatri ganesh whose input is highly appreciated in writing the proposal i also thank rashant and arun from ladal uh, medical india in providing all equipments installation and the educational support services provided i especially thank reena jaj our public diplomacy officer of asha grant 2019 college of nursing and also the members of the simulation lab committee of college of nursing and all my colleagues for their cooperation and support rendered not but not the least i wholeheartedly thank the support provided from usaid velour cmc foundation as well as the cmc administration for all the support provided uh, for achieving or getting this new facility for college of nursing thank you one and all good morning everyone um, respected seniors uh, dear friends i am here to give the overview of uh, the asha grant project which we have applied and we have got it um, this is asha grant award which we wrote with the help of dr aparna and myself on behalf of department of anesthesia with an ambition of having simulation in, incorporated in our education and uh, to give you a background as to what exactly is simulation why are we so passionate about simulation now and it is it is nothing but a way of learning and a way of learning from your mistakes without harming a patient i think there cannot be any other better way of teaching and it also not only uh, you know gives you a knowledge but also helps you build a good team and is it a new thing it's not a new thing and all the high stress um, you know industries have been using simulation for very very long time but definitely it's a resource uh, constrained um, method of learning so that's where we all the time kind of um, look forward to more resources more financial supports so um, our department has been involved with simulation for some time um since 2016 we have been doing simulation on a regular basis before covid and we have actually done around 5 to 6 sessions a one day uh, cme programs on a uh, on regular basis but what has happened is since covid came there was a disruption in all these activities and we are planning to actually proceed now again we also are involved in our community um, activity where we go to schools and train them bls um you know to children not only children above ninth standard also the staff and teachers we have conducted three such sessions again with covid there was a disruption and we are planning to start again coming back to asha grant which we are very thankful to us asha aid we managed to buy our commodities we have bought sim baby and we have bought sim mom um, along with the other um, you know um, facilities to project and uh, to perform these simulations um as uh, i think dr watsla has already kind of summarized the public diplomacy we also share C- we mean simil- cmc shares pretty much the same uh, values as asha has and uh, women empowerment is always a, a big thing they they are not the all faces but there are few faces where the women have led not only cmc but actually um, nation at international platform and um, even our anesthesia seniors are here we we do have gender equality in our department as well and uh, we have a good representation female representation in our department 
uh, as you can see 115 versus 93 um, it, it's not um, it just happened by chance <laughs> <laughs> So um, PD activities, we had similar PD activities. We had phase one, we did it along with nursing. I will not go too much in details, but we had a baseline um, attitude survey. We had phase two where communication cap campaign, we were involved in training the nurses and the nurses took it forward from there to the community. Um, and since we have got the commodity, we have already run uh, four um, you know, simulations. Um, so we have put our mission into action already. And uh, these are some glimpses of, uh, you know, our activities where we have trained different departments. All the departments who are involved with cr critical care have been taught and our PGs also. So um, in the end, I will say thank you so much, Asha Grant. Thank you so much, US Asha Aid. And um, uh, definitely thank you so much, administration, for allowing us to uh, reach our uh, goal and mission. Thank you so much. Greetings from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Greetings from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, respective uh, dignitaries and friends. So uh, the challenges that we face in a resource constrained place is to uh, achieve perinatal outcomes that we want, near perfect perinatal outcomes. But we definitely compromised on patient comfort, caregiver comfort, conducting, uh, 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 providing uh, environment conducive for uh, training and research. And of course, there was always a need to strengthen our safety mechanisms. So pre Asha grant, you can see we had very basic uh, equipment. There were simple beds, not particularly comfortable, but we had them and we were achieving good perinatal outcomes. But thanks to the help from our local administration and from Friends of Velo, we were able, and Ms. Gayatri Ganesh, who helped us put a good uh, proposal and we got a successful ASHA grant. This grant provided us electrically operated delivery cots, a central monitoring system, excellent roof lights, very, very, shall I say, fancy roof lights that we didn't dream we would ever get. We had cordless base station with cordless monitoring for patients. And then we, we, we suddenly got some more items. We got a, we, we got a, um, a point of care ultrasound, cardiac monitors, infusion pumps, and some theater OT lights. Patient comfort. Now, each of our patients was given a comfortable delivery cot. There's cordless fetal monitoring. The patient doesn't need to feel she's strapped to the bed, and uh, she, she's able to uh, be uh, ambulated with no wires. If you saw the previous picture, there were wires all around. Now they have more comfortable uh, and fancy-looking cots, which they can, you know, raise and lower and they can occupy, they can be comfortable in the position they want to. And they also have cordless monitoring. This picture also shows you those fancy uh, roof lights, which we didn't dream we'd ever get. Yeah. Caregiver comfort. This is something so important and we were unable to provide it. We now have automated delivery cots. So the back of all our, pay, all our caregivers who are you can be happy to know that there are eight, more than 90% uh, women and there are powerful roof lights for focus. So these powerful roof lights have made it so much easier for us to function. How did it facilitate training and research? We have almost uh, 12 to 14,000 deliveries a year. We have training on-site, real-time training, 24-7, 365 days, we're training nursing students, medical students, elective students, junior consultants from all parts of the country and internationally. So you're providing an environment that was easy to take care of our patients, gave us extra time. And so we, are, we now have an environment that is uh, conducive for training. 
We also strengthened our safety mechanisms. We now have a central monitoring system that the consultant in charge is able to look after all patients and address patients that need immediate care. The point of care ultrasound, the maternal cardiac monitors, and the infusion pump all added to this. So this is, these are some pictures of how a modernized fancy labor room looks. Our heart, heartfelt thanks from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology for, for, this, for this grant. Um, uh, we would like to thank the American people for this. And you can be rest assured, this is money well spent. All right. Thank you. Wow, three minutes to tell us how a few million bucks has improved healthcare and uh, everything. It's quite a challenge. I was, uh, I'm going to be a little informal here just to break the monotony. Speaking to my wife this morning and I was telling her three minutes to tell a lot of people how a million bucks or more has actually impacted healthcare training and various facets of life. What are your tips? And she said, stick to three minutes. Don't overshoot time. <laughs> I asked her, what happens if I overshoot time? And she said, every one minute, I'll put something on the Amazon shopping cart. <laughs> I left home, six items on the cart. Let's see how this goes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I thank and praise God for this opportunity to actually uh, put forth to the general public all the dignitaries and uh, a lot of CMC employees about this amazing thing that ASHA and USAID have done to our department as part of the ASHA 2018 grant. I represent the Department of Neonatology. We look after little babies. And uh, we're quite a large unit, about uh, 70 beds, which we expand to over 90 at times. We look after babies born out of 14,000 or 15,000 deliveries a year. And uh, we are a huge network of doctors, nurses, uh, other healthcare personnel, allied health, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, psychologists, and quite a lot of people who actually are involved in the care of a single baby. We cater to quite a lot of education from the undergraduate to allied health levels. And we focus on patient care, education, research, and also have a bit of socializing. So where does ASHA come in? The felt need in our department uh, was that we need to optimize treatment of a certain set of babies who don't breathe at birth. And uh, we not only wanted to optimize the treatment, but we wanted a way of improving the long-term outcome and being able to predict their outcomes so that the family, a lot of the stress and the fear that they have during the hospital stay is actually annulled. So we can speak to them more confidently and they leave the hospital a lot happier. And the second prong was obviously to train healthcare personnel, both medical and non-medical and resuscitation of these babies at birth, care of the babies without having to actually, you know, like... Uh, was mentioned that we don't need to do it on babies all the time. And because of the way our graduates and students and other people uh, go on in life, we hope to improve neonatal care in the unit and also globally. Uh, so what Asha Grant did for us was getting a set of equipment that we could not dream of having. So Pretty Cool uh, is, a, is, the only, is one of the few devices available worldwide, which helps to cool babies, which is the definitive treatment for a lot of these babies who unfortunately don't have oxygen going to the brain because they haven't initiated breathing at birth. Uh, an EEG monitor is another device that we help to look at brain signals right at the bedside of these babies and help us to predict within a day or two which are the babies doing well, helps us to detect seizures and helps us to treat them in real time rather than wait for them. NIRS monitor is another thing that talks about oxygen going to the brain, how much is being used. It helps us again monitor babies in real time. Uh, one of our most often used machine is the bedside point of care ultrasound and echo machine. And not only for these babies, doing scans on the bedside for which a lot of us are trained helps us treat in real time. Within minutes, we can detect things and actually alter, uh, alter treatment. And all this goes into that aim that we had of altering and improving the outcome of these babies. Following this, we also had the neonatal simulation boy, uh, lab that we have right outside uh, in the adjacent room at the Paul Brand building. And that has become slowly uh, the way that we're going to be training a lot of these people. So it is quite daunting when you look at this. Uh, that's a little baby surrounded by what USAID and ASHA has done. It's, it's 
uh, a lot of equipment, wires and things, but that's what it takes to actually take the outcome of these babies to the next higher level. We've trained a lot of personnel and that's, uh, we'll be sending reports to you soon. And that's our simulation lab, uh, which has become the focus of our training, undergraduate, postgraduate and all kinds of uh, healthcare personnel. So who are these people? These are the real beneficiaries of what we have been able to do. To put a long story short, this little one was born in our peripheral hospital right at Chad, resuscitated expertly by a team at Chad, which is uh, peripheral registrars and interns. They'll potentially be training at our sim lab. And very a lot of time consuming, they were referred to us within a few hours of birth. And we used all the equipment that you just saw to help provide whole body cooling to this baby to improve outcomes. Parents were very anxious and within 24 to 48 hours when the EEG monitor showed improvement, we could reassure them saying, baby is getting better. You don't need to wait for an MRI scan or you don't need to wait for a year or two to actually find out. And uh, there were seizures, we, we controlled it in real time and the baby was discharged. Parents felt a little tense, but a lot of reassurance on our part. And the father tells us, you know, only when the uh, little one told, called us Appa or Amma, that is when we felt at ease. But that is what the success of such a project and uh, such grants are. And I think this uh, picture, which is there on the brochure, also made it to our Christmas card at CMC, is a reflection of what you have done. Now, uh, why did I start off with an informal story to begin with? That is to tell USAID and ASHA that we are real people. We are passionate about real things. We, we kind of uh, invest in real relationships. And the people who have actually implemented all the grants that you've done are real people. And like Dr. Gigi mentioned, you can be rest assured that every amount that is spent is going to benefit families like that. I just looked at my phone. It's down to one item on the cart. So I think it's a win-win, win-win situation for everybody. Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. There's a huge thank you list. I'm not mentioning it. Hopefully the vote of thanks will uh, kind of include all that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vinod. Thank you for the dignitaries on the dais. And God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Vatsala, Dr. Ekta, Dr. Gigi, and Dr. Benjamin for giving us a very lucid overview of the two ASHA grants. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Margaret Kumar. Dr. Margaret Kumar is the chair of the Velo CMC Foundation USA. Uh, she was a nursing alumnus of the batch of 1963 and a faculty of the College of Nursing for three years before she moved on to Canada and then to the United States where she received both her master's and PhD at the University of Iowa. She was a nurse educator, a clinical nurse leader, and researcher for most of her illustrious career. Dr. Margaret served on the Velo CMC Foundation board for the past 16 years and is currently the chair of the board. Uh, I invite Dr. Margaret to give us a few words. Sorry. Uh, good morning, everybody, and our dignitaries on stage, those in the audience, and nursing students and faculty, mainly. Welcome. Um, when they asked me to do a facilitation, I had every uh, point that everybody else has talked about, so I'm not going to talk about that. But I'm going to say a few years, many years ago, actually, when my hospital got a nursing simulation lab, I walked into the lab and looked at it, and my first thought was, I wish we had this at Velo. That was my dream, to get that into Velo. And I, I'm so happy to be here to see that uh, come to fruition. I want to say that since uh, its first American Schools and Hospitals Abroad, which is Asha Grant, started in 1982, CMC has received over 12 million in capital improvements funding from the USAID. <clears throat> uh, as you've heard already, the ASHA grants have helped um, CMC improve its infrastructure, enhance its inventory of medical equipment, and in its uh, drive for excellence in education, research, and compassionate patient care. I would like to, at the outset, give thanks to God for his 
oversight and blessing to this institution by the many, many partnerships he's allowed us to have. And certainly ASHA grants have been one of the most impactful grants we have received. The most recent ASHA grant collaboration between CMC and the foundation have supported CMC's ability to introduce multiple life-changing and transformative programs, as you've already heard. Now, as all of you know, to write a grant application takes a lot of intensive labor. So I want to make uh, especially thank those of you whose brainchild this might have been, who worked long, hard hours to write the proposal, who wrote it again and again and thought over it and consulted so many people. Uh, thank you to you for the work you've done because you're seeing the fruit of your labor right now. Thank you to the CMC Velo Foundation for being the conduit. There is a lot of work involved in, in getting the grants in on time in a timely fashion with the, with the right stringent uh, reasons that they want. And I particularly want to thank Trish Carroll. She has been so instrumental at the foundation um, for getting that done on time. And it's not just that, it's the follow-up. It's all the things that we need to report back to Asha about outcomes and evaluations. So thank you so much for partnering with us at the foundation to make this possible and definitely to Asha Grant. Um, I have to tell you that um, historically dating back to 1982, there have been many, many projects funded by the ASHA grant. And I'm very proud to say that CMC is a well-deserving recipient of the ASHA grants. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Margaret, for those kind words. I'd like to introduce Dr. John Uman, who is the Vice Chair of the CMC Velo Foundation Association. Dr. John Uman is a community health doctor who has spent 35 years working in the Christian Hospital Bissam Katak, Orissa. Uh, he, he is a CMC MBBS batch alumnus of 1980. Uh, uh, Christian Hospital Bissam Katak is a 250 bed secondary hospital serving three tribal districts in rural South Odisha. He is an expert in the state and national levels in fight against malaria and the MITRA program against malaria is used as a model in many states. But Johnny is currently the vice chair of the CMC council, representing churches and mission hospitals around the country. Uh, Dr. John, would you please be able to address the audience and give us a few words? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And I'm just grateful that I could be here today. This is my home, I grew up on the college campus, trained here. And I think Margaret would agree with me that you can take a guy out of Velour, but you can't take Velour out of us, uh, wherever we are. Um, I'm gonna just throw some thoughts uh, in the air on behalf of the council and association um, in our gratitude to what we are dedicating today to uh, Madam Sangeeta Patel, to uh, Ruben Swamikan and Clara John, all of you at USAID. When you look at the word ASHA, expansions is American schools and hospitals abroad. I remember when I first heard this as a junior doctor, I said, really? But the word ASHA has many other meanings. Today in India, if you say ASHA, we are talking about the accredited uh, social health activist. This army of women who make the difference across the country at the village level. But we forget that originally the word Asha means hope. Hope. And therefore, I want to thank you at USID for the Asha program. And pray that you will continue to create hope all over the world in the places where it matters, that you will continue to strengthen hope, to reaffirm hope in a world that gets more cynical by the day. We need hope. And 
I don't know who coined the word Asha, but you got it right. <laughs> so thank you so much for what you do here and in different parts of the world. The second picture that comes to my mind uh, as we um, do this event is something very similar which happened when I was a junior doctor in the community health department here, 86, 87. Senator Mark Hatfield had come. Uh, he was one of the champions of the ASHA program for CMC along with his colleague, uh, Wes Michelson, who I remember so well. And they came to Chad, I remember doing the columns in front of the, under the mango tree as we welcomed them on. Across the years, so much has been made possible and we are grateful. If we don't understand our yesterdays, we are due to mess up our tomorrows. So today I want to acknowledge all those who have built the days through which, uh, you know, the events and the activities through which we are able to do what we are doing today. That's the second point I want to raise. The third is for our team here in CMC Velo. I'm the chairman for Vices. Depending on how you figure it out. Uh, just a little Velo boy who lives on the wrong side of India. And looking from there, looking from the uh, tribal area of South Odisha, looking from the country that is called Bharat, at what we just heard, you know, Benji said, pretty cool. I thought you were pretty cool. <laughs> Looking at what we just heard, what has been made possible through these grants. I'm so grateful because this is what our country needs. You in CMC have to keep pushing the bar. You have to keep raising the bar for the rest of us. We will deal with the crumbs from the table, but we're grateful. Because what you do in CMC is not just relevant to this little place. You're doing it for the rest of us. We'll access it in different ways. Through the patients we refer, through the people we send to you for training and you send back to us. And so from Bharat, we want to say thank you. Now look carefully at what you do. In CMC, we're into patient care. More than anything else education and training, and the two you cannot separate, to research and the pursuit of truth, to outreach, constantly conscious that when you reach out, you actually reach in. But in all of this, I suggest two phrases that have governed the history of CMC Velour and those of us who try to be little Velours all over the countryside. Situational excellence and social relevance. We pursue situational excellence, whether you do it in the forms in which we saw pictures of here, or whether we do it in the moving of medicated mosquito nets in a village in our place. Is this the best we can do for our people in these circumstances? And I see this project pushing the barriers of situational excellence, but married to that is social relevance. You know, truth sometimes seems like a dynamic equilibrium between seemingly opposite forces. You know, you position your hand, it's the flexors and the extensors, and you can position it wherever you are, but there's a balance. Excellence and relevance is a bit like that. If you chase excellence and exclusion, you will become irrelevant. If you chase relevance and exclusion, you become mediocre. And every organization, there are excellence people and relevance people, and they'll fight with each other. It's a good fight to have. Don't resolve it. Keep the tension. And I see that across what you do, because as I listen to your reports, I can see the pursuit of excellence and yet the pursuit of relevance. And I'm grateful to the USAID, to ASHA grants, to our friends from the New York um, the Vera Boa Foundation, to John and David and Patricia and Margaret, Thank you so much for all the different ways in which we all contribute bits and pieces to this phenomenon that is CMC Velo. One last thought. I was the son of the chaplain here, you know, so um, we tend to talk more than normal. That's my genes. 
A grant is not just about money. A grant is a symbol of trust and trustworthiness. Now, Odia, we say Vishwas and Vishwastata. Trust and trustworthiness. The money will come, the money will go, but it represents something much deeper. And we are grateful for that on both ends. And finally, Gandhiji said, I will open the windows of my house. I will allow the winds from the north, the winds from the south, the winds from the east and the winds from the west to blow through my house. But I refuse to be blown off my feet. And therefore, here in CMC, we take the best from everywhere. But we are conscious that we are rooted here in the people of India. And we're grateful for all those who allow us to do something better, something more. And this project to me is one more step in a journey that will never end. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Dr. John, for those wise words and for also reminding us of the world outside CMC and its needs. And for reminding us that we have to stay relevant to those. We will now have the unveiling of the donor plaques. Uh, may I request Dr. Vikram, our director, to help our dignitaries unveil the first two plaques. Uh, may I request Ms. Sangeeta Patel from the USAID to inaugurate the first plaque. Uh, may I request Dr. Margaret Kumar to unveil the plaque for the Advanced Simulation Center of Excellence in Nursing. May I request Dr. Joy Marman, who is our Associate Director, to help in unveiling the next two plaques. I request Dr. John, Mr. John Reel, CEO of the Velo CMC Foundation, USA, to unveil the plaque for the anesthesia simulation equipment. I request Dr. John Uman to dedicate the plaque for the neonatal ICU equipment. Thank you for the unveiling of the plaques. I have the pleasure of introducing Mrs. Sangeeta Patel, who is our chief guest of honor for the day. Mrs. Sangeeta Patel is a US senior foreign service officer who has assumed the duty of health office director of USAID in July, 2019. Prior to joining the Indian team, she served the USAID in Pakistan, Armenia, Zambia, Namibia, and Washington, DC. She has worked for USAID since 2000, managing programs to advance public health, improve education, promote economic resiliency, provide humanitarian assistance, and strengthen social protection. Before USAID, Mrs. Patel worked with the Carter Presidential Carter's Global Development Initiative, the Centers for Disease Control, 
and Prevention Special, Special Pathogens Unit in Atlanta, as well as the Peace Corps and the German Development Organization in Madagascar. She has a master's degree in strategic studies from the US Army War College, an MPH in maternal and child health from Tulane University, a BA in French, and a BS in biology from Penn State University. Uh, welcome to the program, ma'am. Uh, can I request uh, our nursing superintendent, Dr. Bala Sitharaman, to welcome Ms. Sangeeta Patel with a traditional ponade and a memento. Thank you, ma'am. I request Ms. Sangeeta to address the gathering. Manakam. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today on behalf of the United States Agency for International Development or USAID. Really a, a, good warming, a good warm feeling here. First, not only after the incredible words uh, across the different speakers here, but also uh, the choir. I have to just give a round of applause for the choir too. Uh, whether it was the Reverend's note of thanks or even just from there on. Uh, I'm surrounded by love, by gratitude, and really a sense of peace. Uh, I really want to just express on behalf of the USA team, who's also here with me, Clara John, as well as Dr. Ruben Swamika, and of course, those that are not here at, in Washington, D.C., in the ASHA program that you all have worked with, it really has been a tremendous partnership um, since 1982. But even I would say even across the years, um, on behalf of the U.S. government, uh, it's not just a question of history or of resources. It truly is of partnership. It's about trust. And it really is about being able to work together in ways that we know have a multiplier effect, in ways in which we can bring value-based care and really consider the needs of the most vulnerable. And so it's because of this and because especially those across the room who have been for, foremost responsible even for creating the proposals and really thinking about the ideas that would allow such partnership to come to fruition across the years. So for that, I'm just immensely grateful, not only to the Christian Medical College, but the CMC Foundation, as well as, of course, all of our collaborators and partners, not only in USAID Washington, but beyond. I think that for well over 50 years, the USAID's American Schools and Hospitals um, Program Abroad, or ASHA HOPE, really has been one that I think has inspired hope, uh, not only globally, but also here in India. And it is just a pleasure to be here at this, you know, uh, this entire setting to really experience that firsthand and to really appreciate the dedication, not only for those sitting all the way at the back of the room, but really um, also, you know, those in the choir and beyond who I know are benefiting from an uh, incredible uh, source of learning, of training, and also resiliency to teach others and beyond here. So for us really, um, 
It's these bridges that we're building, these bridges of partnership and of collaboration and friendship, really, where we're able not only to extend uh, this love and this sense of hope through this partnership here across the from the United States to the people in Indi- here in India, but also across the world. For us, Asha's portfolio of awards directly contributes to advancing our goals, of course, not only of it in promoting you know, better health, but also of promoting resilience, of reducing poverty, and of course, really bolstering the healthcare system to be able to respond to challenges not only today, but even though those in the future. So what we do here of course, also guides what we do, not only across the state, but even across India and even globally. I think it's that shared space of learning that really contributes to you know, advancing new ways and practices, but also in, in challenging the norm and extending beyond that. CMC Valor has been a partner, as, as we've heard already earlier, since 1982. And really, uh, it's been one of the you know, most incredible partnerships where we've recognized that like-minded drive to focus on, on cultural exchange, to focus on community engagement, and really excellence in health. Um, I'm particularly excited to be here today, not only at the handover of this vital labor and delivery, um, you know, equipment, this unveiling of these plaques, but also um, at that shared commitment, that ASHA of being able to support uh, saving lives together in partnership and also being able to ensure that future generations of doctors as well as nurses really have life-saving techniques to be able to support others, especially the most vulnerable around them. I know that the Vice President Kamala Harris um, stated last year on the Maternal Day of Action that maternal mortality and morbidity is a serious crisis and one that endangers both public health as well as economic growth, which means everyone is impacted by it. So for us, we know that maternal mortality causes over 56,000 deaths every year in India, and it accounts for really 20% of maternal deaths globally. So we also know that out of the, one, you know, the 15 million babies born um, preterm globally, one-fifth of them are born in India. And it's against these staggering statistics that we have to ask ourselves, what more can we do? That's why we continue to inspire hope and we continue with this partnership because we know that maternal and antenatal mortality, um, while it's been declining in India, um, any loss in maternal or newborn lives is just too much. It's unacceptable. And really we've got to be able to collectively support ensuring that even beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, that we can be resilient, that we can get back to levels where we were before in maternal and newborn care and even exceed them so that we can bolster immunization, bolster prenatal and preventive care, and really look towards a more holistic and healthier tomorrow. The equipment and, of course, the instruments that are provided, um, and even just, as I said, just a partnership over the years, all of that is really to be able to support ultimately safeguarding uh, the mother, the child, and really protecting families here across India. And we certainly hope that not only when it comes to the families that you saw um, you know, on this brochure, but so many others that we're able to support in ways that were not possible, whether it's in intensive care or giving hope uh, that wasn't there previously. We know that whether it's the correct supplies, whether it's the correct setup, whether it's even the quality of care that's provided, it all takes a a kingdom, if you will, and that kingdom working in partnership together um, to be able to support universal health care and to be able to support comprehensive primary health care. We're grateful not only for this advanced simulation center for excellence in nursing, for nurses and healthcare providers for years to come, but again, for that partnership and continuous collaboration with CMC Valor. You've not only helped us to challenge and to support across the, you know, really across the state, 
but also to provide respectful care. And I think that it's not only the mothers and of course um, this generation that will benefit, but more to come. So we're, we reflect today, and we already heard earlier um, from Margaret about the history together. I'm inspired not only by her words, but also by the work that everyone has done here and just excited for us to continue to work together and continue to challenge and to really um, be able to say, what more can we do with humility in partnerships so that we can at least through our deeds uh, be able to support um, not only these families, but so many more. So thank you and really just hope that we can continue to find ways to work together and continue to inspire hope in others. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sangeeta, for those encouraging words. And we look forward to a continued partnership with ASHA and the USAID in the years to come. May I call upon our principal, Dr. Solomon Satish Kumar, to give us a vote of thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Vino. It's been such an overwhelming event this morning to see a pursuit for excellence with social relevance, generosity, tremendous partnership, and of course, hope. Really what the choir sang in the morning when we started, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. And I think it's all about that. And CMC has been blessed with the ASHA USAID grants for the past several years. We thank God for making it possible this has really helped enhance our education, our service and research. And a big thanks to all those who have made it possible. It makes a huge difference to our patients, as we heard, and to our students and all our training programs. On behalf of the institution, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Sangeeta Patel, Director uh, of USA India and her team, uh, Mr. Rubin, and uh, Ms. Clara John for being with us and for all the support that you provide not only to us, but to different parts of the world. Thank you so much. Uh, huge thanks to Dr. Margaret Kumar, Chair of the Bello CMC Foundation, Dr. John Rail, uh, Dr. David Rains, and uh, Patricia for all your support, for your continued support through all the years and also for making this possible. Thank you so much from all of us. Of course, we've heard Gayatri's name come up more than once and we thank her for supporting us with the grant writing and for all the departments who have given the inputs. Uh, we thank all of you who've joined us this morning for this program, both our staff, students and friends who've joined us virtually. When it started, it looked like all women power with Dr. Watsala and <laughs> Dr. Ekta and uh, Dr. Gigi, but uh, thanks Benji for being there. And I'm sure the men will follow. Um, uh, thanks to all the supporting teams who helped uh, complete this project in terms of installation and so many other things, the GS office, the biomedical department, the engineering teams, the purchase department, the CRS, uh, the treasurer, the accounts department. It's a huge teamwork when anything has to happen. Uh, thanks to Dr. Vinu Moses, uh, Deputy Director, Gifts and Grants for doing all the hard work. Thanks, Vinu. Um, Mr. Jonathan, uh, for his tireless efforts in co coordinating the grants and the development office. We have Shika hiding somewhere in the back to Shika and her team. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to Dr. Joy Maman. Uh, he is there in all events contributing significantly to all the events. Thanks, Dr. Joy. Uh, Dr. Vikram mentioned Dr. Peter. Uh, Dr. Peter probably is just left, but a huge thanks to him uh, and Dr. Vikram for the excellent leadership they provide and for coordinating between all the departments to see what is needed most and bring that to the ASHA grant. And thanks to the departments who've uh, just presented uh, how useful it's been. Thank you for seeing the need and for putting 
things together so that you know, patient care can be enhanced and also training uh, can be enhanced. Um, thank you all once again. I hope I've not missed out anybody. Thanks, uh, Reverend Finney, for being with us. Thanks, Dr. Johnny, for your inspiring talk as usual. Ms. Margaret just whispered to me, he's just like his father. Uh, thank you all once again for joining us. Uh, may we all stand for the college song and the national anthem. Girded round by the strong ageless mountains Stands the college we'll honor evermore We thy children shall strive to reflect thee Thou bright glowing gem of Wello, as your banner we wave proudly o'er us, and together we chorus your praise. In your blue we see loyalty's emblem, and truth in your silver's bright rays. Three cheers for the silver and blue, India star in the sky, clear and true. Clouds of suffering we banish forever. Three cheers for the silver and blue. Not for fame, not for wealth, our endeavor. Pride of race, nor of greed, be a boast. Each for all, all for each, thus forever. United from coast unto coast. Strong to serve, strong to save the defenseless. May thy spirit inspire us anew. Not to gain, but to give, be a motto. Three cheers for the silver and blue. Three cheers for the silver and blue. In the star in the sky, clear and true. Clouds of suffering we banish forever. Three cheers for the silver and blue. Janakana Manati Nayaka Jayahe Varata Bhakya Vidata Panjava Sindha Gujarata Maratha Dravida Utkara Bhanga Vindhya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Chala Vitaranga Kava Shubha Name Jahe, Kava Shubha Shisha Mane, Tahe Kava Jaya Gata. Jana Gana Mangala Nayaka Jaya He, Bharata Bhagya Vidata. Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya He. Thank you everyone for attending this program.